Hello, my name is Kelly Cook and I'm an Agile coach here at Undigital. I'm back with you today to share top tips on how to run impactful and rewarding retros, especially in the context of remote teams. We all want to work in high performing teams that deliver great products for our customers and your retros are such an important part of that journey. They need to really make a positive impact. You need to be sure that they're going to solve your problems and they need to generate genuine improvements in, in team effectiveness. But when teams are remote, it can be a bit trickier to create the participation and energy needed for that. And so here's the three things that I think you need to focus on. The first is fostering collaboration. The second is removing barriers to effective communication. And the third is maximizing engagement of the team. So let's deep dive into all three of those things. Fostering collaboration. To create the conditions for effective collaboration, I recommend you encourage the team to be as explicit as they can in their communications. Don't leave space for assumptions and confusion and misunderstandings. Make sure that you're investing efforts into team bonds and building rapport in order to create psychological safety, trust and connection. Opening the retro with an energizer or a safety check is a great idea and can be really useful for building these things. For connection, it's really important to have cameras on wherever possible, but I do acknowledge that sometimes Wi-Fi and other issues get in the way of that, so be mindful. Make sure that your collaboration tools make it as easy as possible to run a great, rewarding retro. So consider where you'll gather people's opinions, how you'll share the sprint data, how you'll vote on the most important actions to implement, and how you'll keep to time. Finally, don't just rely on one form of communication. Flex to meet the needs and preferences of your team. For example, the activities and time boxes might be written out beforehand and shared beforehand in the meeting invite and on Slack, as well as then verb verbally introducing them in the session itself. Mo removing barriers. So what are some barriers to effective communication in retros specifically? Lack of trust, lack of psychological safety, not really knowing each other's preferences, not empathizing with others, tension, team dynamics issues, a large number of people involved, and distractions, to name just a few. As facilitator, you need to help overcome these barriers in the session. So get some alignment up front as a team by agreeing what your team charter is, what's important to you, and make sure that when you run your retro, it's aligned with your team agreements and standards and etiquette. It can be easy to get lost during these sessions as well. So help people stay on the same page and stay on track and stay focused by using a shared digital whiteboard and by summarizing the discussion points and decisions regularly, and especially the actions. If it's a large team, then it can be harder to hear everyone's ideas and it can be harder for people to feel safe to speak up as well. In this case, I really recommend breaking into small groups to work through a particular topic and then share back to the main room to achieve shared understanding as a team. And finally, remember that how you say things is just as important as what you say. The third and final piece is maximizing engagement. In my last short video, I shared tips on designing your retro format. So here's where you need to bring it to life and get everyone active and involved. Make sure that you set the scene really well at the beginning. Remind everyone once again, what we need to get out of our hour together and why it's so valuable, why, why your contribution matters so much. Use an energizer to get everyone's headspace in the room and focused. And I always recommend sharing the facilitator role if you can with others in the team so that they're also playing an active role, either as a scribe or timekeeper or something else that's useful. Once you've got a little bit of engagement there, protect it using open questions and inviting people to share their thoughts, especially if, if they've been quiet for a while. Don't forget that as facilitator, you have to role model the energy that you'd like from the team. The other angle to think about is that engagement in retros dies down when actions aren't implemented and therefore the sessions lose value because they're just not having the, the positive impacts that they need to. 
So make sure that doesn't happen to yours. Make sure you review last sprint sections. Did they get implemented? Did they result in actual improvements for the team? And when committing to this sprint sections, ensure that the team has decided who's going to do what and by when. I always find that pairing on retro actions works quite well. And it's also really useful to add them to the sprint plan as you would any other user story. So those are the three areas that I think you need to focus on. And I hope that by focusing your facilitation efforts on these three pieces, your retros will become even more impactful and rewarding for both you as a facilitator and, and the whole team. We'll share these slides along with the video. And at the end, you can also find a few helpful resources. So there's examples here of how to run a safety check, the types of open questions that can stimulate debate and discussion, and then also um, some links to further reading and recommended tools. If you'd like some support, then do get in touch on LinkedIn or email hello at n.digital. Otherwise, thanks for listening and bye for now.